again and thank you for joining me. So today I'm drawing a blue and gold macaw. How amazing are these birds? I just love the colours on these guys and I've been contemplating drawing one of these for a fair while. I'd actually purchased a couple of photos from wildlifereferencephotos.com that I just keep coming back to, but I had been a little bit hesitant to start. I felt like I'd drawn a very similar piece not that long ago, which is the blue and gold macaw which I use for a lot of my social media profile pics. Now that macaw was a bit of a breakthrough piece for me. It was based on a fairly iffy reference photo that I had found on paintmyphoto.com. Uh, there was very few details in that photo and really the whole thing was a bit out of focus. But I love the bird's pose and I went for it anyway and ended up creating a piece that I was really proud of. Well, I looked at the date on that piece and it turns out that I drew that macaw almost exactly two years ago. So I decided now would be a really great time to draw another one. Now, this time I had a much better reference photo. I could see all of the awesome little textures on his skin and feathers, so I decided to create a much more detailed portrait this time. Now, I have never drawn anything like the texture of that skin, so there was a fair bit of trial and error as I worked on his face. But I took my time and I really studied my reference photo, trying to understand the shapes and the patterns in that face and beak. This area really did take a long time and I worked on it over a couple of days. When this area was complete, I was slightly shocked to see a kind of reptile-like face staring back at me from the paper. I draw a lot of birds, but with those feathers removed, it was a little crazy to see just how dinosaur-like they really are. I needed to get some feathers on this guy, pronto. Now this part was really fun. With all of those scary new textures out of the way, I could move on to more familiar territory. I started off by laying down small strokes of colour on the front of his head just for the smooth feathers and allowed my strokes to get a little bigger and a little softer as I moved towards the back of the bird. I did have a little trouble choosing my colours here. Instinctively I wanted to use really bright colours, but a quick test on some scrap paper showed me I was a long way off. I ended up using much more muted colours like chrome oxide green, earth green, dark naples yellow and brown ochre and I was really surprised to find myself using burnt sienna on the yellow feathers. I never expected to use such a dark, rich colour in a bright area like that. Now that I could see the piece was coming together just as I imagined, I was much more excited to work on it. But I had a plan and I wasn't sure of it, so I was getting a little bit nervous at this point. I knew I wanted to add a background, but now I had something that I really liked down on paper and I didn't want to wreck it. I was really second guessing myself at this point, so I made sure that I took some nice photos of the completed macaw, just in case I hated the end result. The reference picture I had had a rather dark gradient of colours for a background, which did look lovely, but it wasn't quite what I was after. I wasn't really sure what I wanted or how it was going to work out. I felt that I wanted a more colourful piece, but I didn't want to have my background competing for attention with the macaw. I toyed with a few ideas over a couple of days, but it was a walk to school on a rainy day that provided the solution. There were a few beautiful Ponciana trees flowering along the way, and I took some quick photos with my phone. I thought that those really dark greens and reds would provide some really nice colour and contrast. So I used my very, very basic Photoshop skills to add that Ponciana behind the picture of the macaw and blurred it until it was really still bright, but very soft. I liked the Photoshop version, so I decided to take the plunge and add it to my piece. I haven't done a blurred background like this before, and the combination of that red and green really did have the potential to blend into an awful mess. And I must admit that in my first layers, I was sure this was going to be an absolute disaster. But I had already gone this far, so I just kept adding light layers and blending in the hope that it would eventually come together. I did have a small catastrophe at this point. I recently made a video about mounting my paper to board and a few people asked about pre-mounting the paper before starting work, so I made sure to do this with my next piece. Well, unfortunately I did get a tiny smudge of that impasto gel on my watercolour paper and I didn't see it until this point of the piece. And unfortunately my pencil did not want to stick to that spot. Luckily I had some of the brush and pencil touch up texture on hand and I was able to add a coat of that over the gel and this allowed me to add colour over the top of that area. It's not a perfect fix. I can see there is a slight texture change, but it is so, so much better than it could have been. I did spend a lot of time working on that background, but when I was finished, I was feeling a little deflated. 
I wasn't super proud of the result, but I decided it would be a good time to just leave it be and see how I felt in a couple of days. Well, sure enough, as the piece sat on my easel, I was able to look at it as a piece of art rather than as an ongoing project, and I started to really like the result. Funny how a little bit of distance from your work can really change your mind. Now that I'm looking at it, I am really happy with the end result, and I am so glad that I pushed through all of that uncertainty. So here's the end result. This piece will be for sale up in my Etsy shop, and I am very excited to announce that I have a 40 minute real time video on my new Patreon page, showing how I completed the face of this macaw, complete with an unscripted voiceover where I explain what I was thinking and what I was doing as I worked. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave me a like or a comment to tell me what you think, and if you'd like to see some more of my work, why not hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys!